So in one of the previous presentations, we created this rotate JavaScript. And I'll just throw this back on the cube. In fact, I'll move this cube over just a little bit. Um, so I'm just orbiting to change my uh, perspective to look in the general direction of the camera so that when I hit the play button, uh, I'm looking in the direction of the camera. Um, so I have this basic cube and, and uh, I'm gonna create a new material folder just to get a little bit of contrast inside our scene. I'm gonna create a couple of materials, simply call this one green for now, and I'm gonna choose uh, kind of a simple earthy green. And I'm gonna take the smoothness down so it's not so shiny. And I'll throw that on the ground and I'll duplicate this green and we'll call this blue or whatever color you, you decide you wanna go with. And I'll save that here um, for a second cube in just a moment. So uh, this first cube, we've attached the rotate script. And if I click on the rotate script, Unity's kind enough to point me in the direction uh, and show me the location of that script in case I wanna edit it. Um, I can deactivate this script a couple of different ways. I can completely remove the component by clicking on the cog. It's in line with the rotate script and tell it to remove component. Um, that would completely eliminate that asset. Alternatively, I'll, I'll add this script one more time. Um, I can deactivate this component by unchecking uh, to the left of the, the title of the script, rotate, I can, I can deactivate that script. Uh, so if I hit the play button, you'll see that this, this uh, cube is not rotating. I'll get rid of my stats here. So um, it still has the logic of the script, but it's not set to run uh, by default. If I turn it back on, it's checked, I hit the play button. When this game object becomes active and this component is active, uh, we get the functionality of that script running on the game object. So let me toggle the play button. I'm gonna create a second cube just to compare and contrast this workflow with Playmaker. I'll add another cube, change its position. Um, this one, just so that we don't get confused, I'm gonna apply the uh, material. In fact, I'll call this, uh, this will be my Playmaker cube for now. Playmaker cube, for lack of a better name. And I'm gonna add the same functionality uh, of the script without actually scripting. Playmaker uses this concept of finite state machines, um, which will allow us to um, visually kind of break out some logic and run different actions or functions on different states of an object. Um, so in this case, I have my Playmaker cube selected and down in the Playmaker editor, I'm going to right click anywhere in this gray uh, Playmaker Editor work screen here. I'm gonna right click and choose to add an FSM. Uh, FSM stands for Finite State Machine and, and moving forward, we're just gonna to refer to them as state machines. Um, or we can think of this as just kind of our program or the logic that we're creating. So I'm gonna to choose to add an FSM. Now, once I do that, um, we end up with this start event and the start event transitions to state one. So if I look up here in the hierarchy, I see there's a Playmaker cube and it's inherited this little icon, this little Playmaker icon. And that's just an indicator letting us know that this has a state machine on it. Okay, so this object has a state machine. Uh, I can also look over here in the inspector and see that there's a new component. It's a Playmaker FSM script. Uh, it's currently called FSM. Later, we're gonna start changing the state machine names uh, to reflect some of the logic that we're developing. Um, but for now, we're gonna stay focused on the Playmaker Editor and the Actions Browser. So right now, state one within the Playmaker Cube object is selected. If I click off here in the editor space, you can see that state one is no longer selected, okay? And, and uh, these tabs to the right will change. So if I, if I deselect here, uh, the state window, the state tab is no longer populated with information. When I click state one, you can see that we have a state one label here. And this is a place where we can relabel uh, this state. For now, we're gonna keep it as state one. We can also add a description. Now there are some other tabs in here. We have the FSM and this is where, kind of reflects this information here that we see in the inspector. And this would allow us to um, change the title of the FSM. Um, typically when I rename an FSM, I keep FSM on the front end. 
uh, but I might call this FSM Rotate. Now you can see in the inspector, it updates its title, um, but for the sake of the demo, that's unnecessary, but that's really what the FSM tab is here and, and for us to choose a couple of other options here. But we're gonna stay focused on the state tab early on. Now we do have events, and this is another important uh, tab, and variables, but again, we'll stay focused on state. So I have state one selected in the Playmaker cube window. Now these are contextually sensitive, meaning that if I deselect state one, I'm no longer focusing on that state. Uh, the state is the place where we're going to add actions, okay? And this state belongs to this game object called Playmaker cube. Now if I select the other cube, you can see that my state machine disappears in my Playmaker editor. That's because I don't have uh, this object, this cube object does not have a state machine on it. But if I go back to my Playmaker cube, you can see that that content loads. So it's kind of similar to the inspector in that way, in that it only loads content relative to the stuff that we have selected. So I'll select my Playmaker cube, make sure that state one is selected. The concept of state machines is that we can flow in and out of states. Uh, we can run actions and functions and different kinds of logic. We can compare things, we can modify parameters, we can do a whole host of things. In fact, um, pretty much anything that we can think of from a logic standpoint, we can do within uh, the Playmaker state machine setup. But all we really wanna do is we wanna get this object to rotate just like we did uh, by writing a script. So when we want an object to rotate, what we're actually telling it to do is that we wanna take the game object, we wanna to talk to this game object, we wanna identify its transform, and then we wanna tell it to rotate according to an axis. And so the way that we're gonna do this is with our state one selected, so I'm, I'm confirming that my state one is selected, I'm gonna to go to the actions browser and I'm gonna look for the transform category. All of these actions and all of these categories have uh, scripts within them. And so when I go to transform, and I'll just scroll down, this is the transform category, and there's a lot of different things that I can do, but they all, in some way, relate to a game object's position, rotation, scale. So their position relative to each other, where they are in world space. Um, so if it has to do with a game object's transform component, uh, we'll find it in the transform category. And what I'm looking for is uh, simply rotate. So I see it here, so it's transform rotate. I can add this action to state one a couple of different ways. I can click and drag rotate into this state one uh, panel here. I can double click on rotate and because I had state one selected, it adds rotate to state one. If I wanna get rid of this action that I just added, I could select it and hit the delete key, or I could click on the cog here and say remove action. If I select rotate and I hit return, it'll do the same thing. It'll apply whatever action to the state we have selected. So this is the rotate command, and we'll just go through this list and, and kind of satisfy any parameters that we think are required in order to get this cube to rotate around its Y axis. So, this action, you'll notice that if we select this action, we get a little preview of it here, down here at the bottom of the action browser. But now that we've applied it uh, to this game object, we're just gonna go through this, uh, um, this list and see if we need to change anything. So the first parameter says the game object that we wanna rotate. It's saying use owner. And we can target other game objects, but uh, what use owner means is that it's whatever the game object uh, that owns this state machine. And in this case, because we've created this state machine on the Playmaker cube, that means, that means it's the owner that owns this logic or this action, and that's the thing that's gonna rotate. So we have a vector field here. We're gonna skip that because it's really kind of a combination of X, Y, Z information. Um, what I'm interested in is the Y angle. And by default, it says none. And if we click here, we only have a couple of options. It says new variable or new global variable. We're gonna deselect that for a moment and we'll talk about variables um, uh, in the next presentation. Um, we have a couple of different options whenever we're influencing actions inside Playmaker. And in this case, um, 
this little equal button over to the right is uh, toggled and it's saying use variable. If I click on this button and turn it off, uh, this use variable, it's not using a variable, it's using a hard value. Uh, this Y angle, this is a, a float value and a float is simply a floating point number. So it's, you know, it could be 1.41. This is the same value that we entered into uh, one axis of our uh, rotate script. And so I'll type in, let's say 10. So I'm rotating 10 degrees along the Y. Uh, the space that we're rotating is its own space. It's not the world space and that's good. Uh, and we can do this 10 degrees per second every frame, and then we have a couple of other update options, okay? So we'll do this per second and simply check this. And now when I hit the play button, what's happening <clears throat> is that this cube, this Playmaker cube owns this state machine. It owns the logic in this state machine. And when we hit the play button, we enter the start state and you can see it passes us to state one. It's highlighting, we can actually see the update happening within uh, the Playmaker editor telling us we're currently inside state one. This is why it's green. And we're stuck here because there's no other states that we're not transitioning to anything else. So it's running whatever action is inside this state. Okay, so we can create a rotate function really easily. Now, what's happening behind the scenes um, is that we're you know using this visual interface here to input our logic and determine how we want this function to run. This actions browser has tons of stuff in here, some pre-existing scripts. And what's happening behind the scenes is that each one of these scripts that exists in these categories uh, contains a C-sharp script. Um, and if I were just to jump into assets, we have a new uh, folder called Playmaker. And this is just to kind of show you what's happening behind the scenes. I'll go into actions and in here we should find a rotate script. I'll just search for it. There's the rotate script. I can see that's in Playmaker Actions Rotate. So this is the script that we're running behind the scenes, a much more complicated script uh, than the one that we wrote. And a lot of the reason that it's more complicated is because it's it's rendering this um, this uh, UI for us to um, interact with a with, uh, playmaker so that when we go to um, this window here, there's a, you know, some metadata that's included that allows that information to render uh, in this screen. And then we pulled in, we have this UI built into that script. Um, but behind the scenes, we're running uh, a C sharp script that accommodates all of this functionality. Uh, that that we've uh, you know would have to otherwise write ourselves. Now we could write our own scripts and integrate it into the Playmaker library, and then access all this stuff. Um, but I think we'll find that the vast majority of things that we want to do when prototyping a game, we'll be able to find uh, inside this Playmaker category. It's really will give us the opportunity to focus on developing our logic and our mechanics, um, and focus on the design and the interactivity of the user experience rather than focusing on the nuts and bolts uh, of the syntax uh, and the structure of the language. So this will help speed up and allow us to rapidly prototype uh, our concepts much faster. So I'm just gonna select the cube, uh, the Playmaker cube, I'll go back to state one and I'll just add a value to maybe the Z angle just to see. So we'll rotate it at two axes at the same time and you can see now that we're, we have a more complex rotation. Uh, so that's kind of the, the basics of getting a, a state machine up and running. Uh, in the next presentation, we'll add to this a little bit and use, um, we'll introduce a little bit of uh, user interactivity to where we can switch on rotation with a button press. Uh, and we'll talk about, start talking about multiple state, state machines, uh, which is where things start to get um, pretty interesting. So we'll do that in the next presentation.